Well, you went and did it, didn't you? you? You baked cookies in the same place that you buy cookies from. So it's a natural common thing for the things that we enjoy and are influenced by to seep their way into our work. If it's in small ways, you can take pride in the fact that you were not, in fact, the first artist ever to create things completely in a vacuum because no one's ever done that. There are cases though where that hint of nutmeg in the cookies ends up having been the whole jar of nutmeg. You were not supposed to substitute the flour for nutmeg. Cases where the art or characters are veering headlong into the territory of derivative, knockoff, we have that food at home carbon copies, at least in our minds or in the minds of others. But it doesn't have to be that way, so let's help you out. Quick exciting news announcement, Saturday and Sunday, May 9th and 10th, mark your calendars. I started this year with the plan to make more physical merch for Biko's Backpack and so that I would have something when I started going to conventions again, and then I booked a bunch of tables at conventions, and then, uh, oops. So May 9th and 10th was a weekend that I was going to be at a local Comic Con, but you know what? We're gonna do one better. That whole weekend I'll be streaming on twitch.tv slash bageldenizen from a virtual booth right here. We'll have a live stream, some cool announcements, a few surprises, and a special sale, so make sure you stop by. So I'll relate one of the biggest issues that I see in characters that end up derivative with another food comparison. In one scenario, you love Big Macs so much and want to make something on your own, so you order a Big Mac, take it home, scrape off the special sauce, and then add like relish or Cajun seasoning. In a way, you made it your own, but largely and wholly, that sandwich is still a Big Mac that you made changes to. Ordering a signature pizza and adding a topping does not stop it from being that signature pizza. In the same way, let's say that you want to make a hedgehog character, but you're worried about them being derivative of Sonic. Taking exactly Sonic's character design and changing the color is going to be inherently derivative because you took the existing final product and iterated on that. The good news is that you don't have to do that. What if instead your inspiration to make a hamburger or pizza led you to start one step backwards, to reverse engineer, to figure out what led the creators of that food to make the final product? you would end up with two much more raw materials, that being techniques and ingredients, and changing either of those things as you attempted to make similar foods. So that's our first method, and let's do that with a character design. If you took Sonic the Hedgehog and simply changed the color while still trying to create from the same cloth as Sonic, there are few people that will believe that this is truly your original hedgehog character. But let's take Sonic a step backwards to see what he's comprised of, techniques and ingredients, or the content of the character and its influences. So we have the ingredient of the real world animal of the hedgehog as a starting point, a creature that is relatively fast for its size, but we also have influences like early rubber hose characters like Mickey and Felix the Cat. We've got some contemporary 90s culture and personality, and the result is a character that is heavily stylized away from that original animal. Changing any of those ingredients will lead you to create a vastly different hedgehog character. A change in personality from confident and cool to grouchy and cantankerous should inform a lot of new, different things in your design process. Take Mabel from Animal Crossing, a character who is literally a blue hedgehog, but the connection to Sonic probably doesn't present itself to you immediately, although folks have made some fan art of the two over the years. I don't think anyone in their right minds would claim that Mabel is derivative of Sonic. The art style, the purpose, the personality, and the shape language of Mabel are all very different. This is a point in the larger picture that I do see a lot of newer artists struggling with. It's something that we've talked about before. Oftentimes, there is one large influence that inspires someone to start making art, and so naturally a lot of that early work is very similar to that main influence. The quality of the art generally suffers as well, since they tend to utilize the same stylizations and abstractions as the art they're working from, without ever having learned certain art fundamentals that allow them to draw the right way before drawing them the wrong way intentionally. The result is like a very slow car crash where the artist says, don't hit that influence, don't hit that influence, but can't help but veer directly into it. That's why the second thing to do, along with continuing to push your art fundamentals as you learn, is to diversify the influences you have. You've probably heard the expression that great artists steal. And the meaning there isn't that plagiarism is okay, but that figuring out how other artists do things is a great way to learn. 
Now, your main source of inspiration right now may be a contemporary, stylized art style, an individual artist, a show, a game, and that's all great. But instead of just diversifying by looking at other games and shows, why not dip further back into things like traditional artists from decades or centuries ago to see what they made and why it's so appealing? Or diversify outside of your hyper-specific niche of shonen manga to look at what people are doing with limited animation styles, with stop motion or puppetry, or even things like pixel art or low-poly modeling, and dip even further out of that to look at musical theater or an album of music from a genre you don't normally listen to, or an interview with a creator or craftsman that's passionate about their work completely outside of what you do. There's a third thing, of course, and it's the life experience, background, personality, relationships, and stories that come from your particular voice. They'll help you to bake your own pizza dough or to cure your own pepperoni instead of just buying those ingredients. So if there's any key idea that I want you to take away from this video, it's that of abstraction. So an apple is a raw ingredient and an apple pie is an abstraction of the apple. Now you could use an apple in a recipe really easily, but I think it's a lot trickier if you're going to use apple pie as an ingredient. It's literally gone through a, a chemical process, it's baked, and if you're using someone else's apple pie, it'll be hard to pass off your new dish as completely your own. So try and recognize what a raw ingredient in your design process is and what an abstraction is. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves was I, I saw someone on YouTube who's definitely not a, a professional artist, but I guess a popular one, advising people that their character design process should be, if you wanna make a knight character design, go to Pinterest and type in knight character design. It, that that makes my blood boil because you're destined to make something derivative of someone else's abstraction. Absolutely go to Pinterest and search for knights, look for armor and poses and all of those things that act as reference. But starting with someone else's design is starting with an abstraction. And hopefully you can see the problem with that. Star Wars is famously an abstraction of samurai films and westerns and serials in addition to being about spaceships and laser swords. So anything that starts with Star Wars as an influence is kind of almost going to be fan fiction. Of course, the reminder in all of this is that in the end, you can't make something so original that it's impossible to compare it to something else. I made a whole video called This Reminds Me Of about the all too often comparison people make to existing things, no matter how original you are trying to be. Everything that's created by us is a collection of existing things filtered and remixed through us. So don't paralyze yourself over originality. Instead, just try to be authentic. May 9th and 10th on twitch.tv slash bageldenizen is a virtual Comic-Con booth, but with a few of the convention experience bonuses like special programs and announcements, so definitely make a point to be there. If you like these videos and want to see them keep getting made, YouTube ads are not going to make that happen, especially now. Instead, you can keep my forge burning over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen or brooksigleston.com slash shop, and of course you get something in return for your support. You can keep up with me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Bagel Denizen. Thank you so much for watching, and have fun creating. Yeah, you want to make your own uh, your own mouse character design? Here's what you're going to want to do. All right? Go to Pinterest.com and type in Mickey Mouse character design sheet, and you just trace that puppy. You're done.